So how do you reconcile those two? You have to deny yourself, deny everything about you, deny even your own life. But you ask whatever you want in my name and I'll give it to you. And the key to reconciling that is transformation. The key of reconciling, you have to deny yourself, but you don't deny yourself for the purpose of denying yourself. You deny yourself for the purpose of receiving his life. You live through him. And so when you bear fruit, saints of God, listen to me, bearing fruit, when you are a fruit-bearing Christian, when the life of God is manifesting in you, when his sap is coming to the surface, that you're not going to ask for anything except that which is going to produce more fruit. Are you here? You're going to ask for those things, man. You forget about yourself. The more I grow as a Christian, the more I see the vanity of this life, man. And if you don't see that this life is vain, it's because you're vain. Are you here? If you don't see the vanity of life, it's because you're steeped in vanity yourself. You've become worldly. Are you listening to me? But the more I, I, I mature and the more I grow in this word, in the wisdom of the word, man, the more I see this world don't really mean a whole heck of a lot. And I just want him. I want to satisfy the agenda of heaven. And so he says that if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. What's the first desire of your heart if you're somebody who delights in the Lord? It's the Lord. That'll be the first desire and he'll change you. And see, the beautiful thing about Jesus is that even the dumb stuff that you ask for, even the silly things, the stupid things that you ask for, he's able to get beyond the husk. He's able to get beyond the shell, beyond the artificial thing, and get to what you're really asking for. Notice that when Jesus is about to go to the cross, the disciples are arguing about who's going to be the greatest among us. Who's going to be the chief besides you, Jesus? Who's going to be the number one stunner in your absence? And Jesus doesn't put out the flame. Jesus doesn't try to retard the flame of passion that the disciples have. He simply reinterprets and redefines greatness and gives them an opportunity to achieve it. He gives them a chance of becoming great. How? How do you become great as a Christian? How do you become great as a child of God? By stooping. 